Kim and Ryan Smith have lost a combined total of over 200 pounds, and they have found unbelievable freedom with intermittent fasting. Thank you, uh, Kim and Ryan, for being a part of this. Uh, why don't you introduce yourselves and, and tell people what you do? Well, uh, I'm Kim, and uh, uh, very newly, I do this. I promote our book, and I uh, mentor other people who are interested in my transformation, which is uh, most notably about the weight loss, but um, a bit more than that. And so I uh, run a busy Facebook group, and I blog, and I have a bunch of other projects brewing. So previously, I was a medical scribe working in healthcare, but... Uh, that four years has come to an end, and now I'm starting down a new path. Uh, I'm Ryan, and I'm a high school English teacher. I've been teaching for almost 20 years. And more recently, I've been working a little bit with Kim on her Facebook group and also uh, dabbling in some writing. Oh, excellent. So why don't you guys tell everybody how much you've lost, uh, how you found success with weight loss, uh, what, what did you do, and how long did it take? So the, the book that we wrote was really about the fact that we had uh, both had a weight struggle, but a different type of weight struggle um, and how intermittent fasting was the thing that brought us into the same space. So um, my total weight loss is somewhere around 90 pounds and about 60 of that is in the last uh, 21 months that I've done intermittent fasting. So I'm not quite 100 pounds down from heaviest, but 90-ish. Wow. Uh, I've lost 120 pounds. Uh, twice in my life, um, once in 2001 and again in 2014. Uh, I regained about 40 pounds and lost that with intermittent fasting. And so when, when you say you so you lost it with intermittent fasting, then regained it and then lost it again? Uh, no, I, I lost 120 pounds on a vegetarian diet years ago and then regained that, lost 120 pounds with a paleo style diet and was starting to regain that when I discovered intermittent fasting and took that 40 pounds of regain back off. Right, so that that's awesome. And you guys did it together, right? Like at the same time? Yeah, the, um, the most recent part of this um, journey and the part that's been so dramatic has been uh, with intermittent fasting, uh, not just because of um, the great success we have with the weight loss part of it, but, you know, the other, or what we consider to be, you know, physical and mental health transformation that came with it that is, I'm sure somebody who's a scientist could explain, uh, you know, at the molecular level how that all worked, but um, it's been a real uh, time to get happier and, and healthier in all ways, and so that's been great for us to do together, and that's really why we, um, we, we wrote the book because people saw our pictures and just couldn't believe that we were the same people, even though obviously weight loss pictures are always dramatic. Um, they just thought we looked so much healthier and happier. And so uh, that's, we kind of try to tell that story. Well, and so, so how long have you maintained your weight loss at this point? Um, so for me, I mean, people ask me if I'm in maintenance and I say uh, yes and no. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to where I would like to be on the scale. I actually, um, I think I, I'm a lot smaller than I was at this weight the last time I was at this weight. And so I think that I just have a lot more muscle this time around. And, um, but I definitely consider myself to be in maintenance for many months now in terms of having just really perfected this regimen that I live and eat with. Um, and so that's probably been m most of 2018, really, um, probably at least eight, nine months that my weight isn't really changing, but I continue to live the lifestyle and reap the benefits. And so what is your daily routine? Because I think people always just love to know, like, okay, what is that? What does it look like for you? Now, especially now that you're in, uh, in maintenance, but, and has it changed from when you were just, you know, losing weight? For me, it really hasn't. I have, um, for the bulk of the 21 months, I have done I say it's a 19.5 because I know a lot of people are familiar with that regimen, um, but really it's more like a 20 or 21 hour fast that I keep every day. Um, I eat the same way within my three to four hour window now that I did a year and a half ago. Uh, it's always worked. I've always felt really uh, like I eat well and I've got plenty of energy and 
I toy around intellectually with doing a different regimen or trying something else, but there has not been nothing to really push me or urge me to do that so far. Uh, my daily routine is, is similar to Kim's, but I, I tend to fast a little bit longer, mostly uh, because of practical reasons related to my work day. I, I've really come to appreciate not taking food to work and not having to deal with that. Um, so I often don't eat until I get home from work around 4.30 and we're typically done dinner by 6.30. So sometimes it's a fairly short window for me. On the weekend, I tend to open a little earlier and be a little more flexible. And so when you're eating, like what kind of foods are you eating? Do you limit carbs or do you just eat whatever you want to eat? I love that question when people, because I get, you know, I, I travel in some big communities online, uh, not just our own, but the one that we started from, um, which is Jen Stevens Delay Don't Deny Community. And people always ask me, do you watch what you eat or do you eat what you want? I say, yes. I do. <laughs> we do watch what we eat uh, in the sense that we don't, um, we don't eat carbs without restrictions, but uh, we eat them every day. We're not on a low carb um, regimen as somebody low carb would understand it. You know, we eat potatoes and rice and um, we tend to stick with desserts that are based on honey or maple syrup and not a lot of refined sugar, but we eat those things. We eat pretty much what we, what we want. We watch it, but we, we watch it going down the hatch. You know, we, we, we eat, we eat pretty well every day. And that's, you know, one of the pieces that makes us feel like we have a lot of freedom with this lifestyle. I like to point out to people that for me, this is a, a, a really different approach. Like I've lost weight the two other ways and why it failed for me was because I couldn't stick to those rules. I couldn't stick to the restrictions. And now I, I'm careful about what I eat. I don't, I, I use common sense, but I uh, eat from all the food groups. There's, there's nothing that I say I, I won't eat or that I can't eat. I, I've tried to, to take that out of my vocabulary and I will eat carbs, I will eat sugar. Um, if I'm someplace and someone's offering anything, I, I can eat it. And I, and I don't say that it's a rule that I can't have anything. Right. So has your weight always been a challenge and this may be different for each of you, but like, has it been a lifelong thing or? So that this is really the piece of our story that's different where, where we uh, live such a similar lifestyle now, but no, I didn't have a weight a problem uh, as a child or really as a teenager though, you know, after puberty is when I, started to have a little more awareness of weight coming on more easily, but it's really um, more of an issue after my children. And really the bulk of my weight issue is in the context of our marriage. You know, we had a lot of struggles around food that we struggled with together, which is part of, you know, the, the book is about how we lost weight, but it's also about how we gained the weight, which was through, you know, a lot of really excessive eating and a lot of dysfunctional patterns around food. So mostly my thirties were my, my weight struggle and I'm 45 now. Uh, I've had problems with weight pretty much my entire life. I was a very skinny kid for the first few years of my life, but started gaining weight probably around eight or nine uh, and just basically continued to, to climb in weight through my teenage years and into adulthood uh, and topped out somewhere around 278 pounds when I was in my late twenties. And it was at that point that I finally turned it around and lost weight the first time, but it was a constant struggle. I've been on lots of diets. I've tried lots of different things. I've had lots of brief starts with various diets to lose, you know, five, 10, 20 pounds and then, and then regain it. Uh, and it wasn't until almost 30 that I took it all off. And even then continued to struggle for a few more years until, until fasting. Mm -hmm. And so um, was there a particular moment that you can remember where you just said, I, this is it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm keeping it off. Or, or was it just kind of something you came to gradually? It was a gradual thing for me in that I spent many, many years just having completely given up on all of it. And, and um, it's, you know, I'm not a scale person. One of the things that I tell people is I don't really like to get on the scale, but I still do it every few weeks because I spent many years not getting on the scale. And I also gained 80 pounds during those years. So during that time, I was really just letting everything go. And then it's been almost three years, I guess, that I started to limit carbs. Those were always my problem. Sweets and sugar was always my problem um, with food. And so 
I started to do a different regimen that um, restricted carbs to a certain eating window. You know, interestingly, it was kind of a stepping stone to doing the fasting the way that I do it now. But um, it was about uh, fear. I started to work in healthcare and started to see a lot of people with just serious complications from their obesity. And I, I was pretty fortunate that I never had any kind of problems with blood pressure or blood sugar, um, but that would have come, you know, so it, it really just kind of became a time to, to start working on it. And each step of the, the things that I did to my eating brought me to where I am now. Uh, fear was a big motivator for me too. I uh, got a diabetes diagnosis when I was 29 and that really threw me for a loop. I was really concerned about what that meant for me and it was a, a huge uh, slap in the face. I, you know, I had a lot of irrational fears about um, loss of limb and death and, and decided that was that was the thing that had to make a change. So that that's what motivated me to become a vegetarian briefly and take the weight off. And, and that worked for a time, um, though I did regain it all. And I got a second uh, diagnosis of high blood sugar, which prompted me to lose it all the second time. Uh, and I think when I started to put it back on right before discovering fasting, there was a little bit of that fear too. I, I knew from my prior experience that if that road continued, I would get that high blood sugar reading again. And I, I just, I couldn't keep risking that. So I, I was pretty motivated to make a change that I could actually stick with and, and maintain long-term. Right. And so now no diabetes or? I like to say that I'm cured. I know the medical establishment doesn't necessarily agree with that. Uh, I, I don't test anymore. Uh, my last A1C was a 4.7 or something. I mean, better than normal. Um, I have no symptoms or any trouble. So as far as I'm concerned, I am not diabetic, but I know that it wouldn't take that much to go back in that direction. So I, I'm very mindful of, of what I'm doing. Right. So what th this time was different, I think, for both of you, you, you feel like it's something that's like a, a lifelong thing. Do you think there was any mindset shift that happened or was it really just the fasting? What do you think? I think that, you know, I mean, I'm, really engrossed in all of this now because I'm doing a lot of writing and collaborating with other people in the community. But uh, I think that there's um, something that is really powerfully um, impactful on your mindset about doing fasting. I mean, a piece of the regimen that we do because of the book that we follow is about drinking black coffee. And that was like a huge fear for me to drink black coffee. And then when you, um, you do that or you don't, you don't eat for X hours and then that becomes longer, that becomes longer. And you start to have, um, if you've been in a very rigid fixed kind of mindset, which I think I was most of my life, um, you, you really realize that fixed mindset, it may be something that you had, but that can be changed and you can go into a growth mindset and have a sense of capability about yourself that, um, far, exceeds uh, anything to do with your food or you know now I just think about I mean I think the fasting is something I'm committed to because of what I think it's done physiologically for my body but I continue to do it every day because it's been so expansive in my thinking about myself and what I want to do and you know basically it's changed my whole life that's awesome and I, I think it's a, a physical and emotional transformation as well I, I think I, I don't know you know, the science behind addiction, but I do know that I used food in an addictive way. I, I, I used it to treat my emotional state. I used it to treat anxiety. And there's something about just not eating that works mm -hmm. for me. Like that's just off the table as an, as a, as a coping mechanism. So I have to, to get through my day in other ways. And I think that's made me healthier emotionally, physically. I think it, there's something to that all of it as well. I mean, I, I think my insulin is low and, and my blood sugar is stable. And so I'm not compelled to eat physically. And so with those two things combined, fasting is just different. And for me, most of all, it's been about not, not having a constant sense of failure because I fell off the wagon or, you know, broke my rule. And I used to spend many days, even at my lowest weights before, um, eating something by 9 a.m. and then being kind of torn up about it all day and thinking, well, today was a bad paleo day. 
maybe tomorrow will be better. And now I don't have bad days, really. I, I can eat what I want to eat and I don't have to feel guilty about any of it. Right. So what is one piece uh, of advice that you would give somebody on their weight loss journey? Maybe they're just starting out and, and feel they feel overwhelmed. So what would you say to them? I think that what I'm trying to convey to a lot of people that I meet that are just contemplating this is um, to really try to separate um, fasting as a practice from diets that just like exercise is a health practice and meditation is a health practice and all of these other things are a health practice. This is uh, fasting as a skill is a, something to practice for your health. And the beauty of it is when you get good at it, you don't need a diet anymore because when you eat, you can just eat, you know, and um, people, I even have people who've been in my life who've been close to me through this whole process that still don't believe what I say, even though I'm like the living embodiment, embodiment of it, they say it's too good to be true. That can't really be right. But um, why I enjoy interacting with other people who fast is they understand that um, it seems too good to be true, but it isn't. And, um, you know, I am not an athlete. Um, I do enjoy walking and I know you do too. Um, but I think as a non-athletic person throughout my life, I always assumed, again, fixed mindset. If you're not good at this, you can't get good at it. And it's like fasting is really a skill that you can get better and better at. Um, and it becomes easy and effortless and and just an intuitive part of living life like nobody people worry about eating in that they don't know how much or what to eat but nobody worries about it as a skill they know how to they know how to to eat and fasting will become just as easy as eating when you practice it as consistently as we do with eating i i would tell people to just believe it and if you don't believe it pretend you do and, and try it uh, because what do you have to lose, you know, in trying that? It, it sounds extreme to a lot of people. And I think, and I understand that. I, it would have sounded extreme to me a few years ago. Uh, but I think just just believe it, just trust it, just live every day and eat. And the weight and your body recomposition will just happen while you're you're living. And your life every day does not have to be about writing stuff down and starting over and reading the latest book. It really can just be far easier than right. people realize. That's great. Um, and it, Mindset by Carol Dweck, is that the book that you really learned about the whole? Yeah, it's a great book. It's all fits together for me. I mean, I'm on a little bit of self-improvement overload as I try to follow everyone and read everything, but um, there are things that are right for you and things that aren't. And the stuff around mindset work is so such an important piece of this because it's not that the, the going without food for 21 hours isn't physically hard, but it's mentally hard if you tell yourself you're suffering and you tell yourself you're, or you believe the idea that you're, you know, metabolism will grind to a halt within 21 hours and all the rest of the, all the rest of the myths and all the things that cause people to have fear-based thinking around it. So that's, that's what we like to encourage people. Um, and I know you have a big uh, viewership of folks that follow you and follow this channel. So many of them probably already know this too. They live the lifestyle too, but um, you know, we're just, we're all trying together to kind of share our experiences because you can pick and choose from different people you meet and whose stories you hear what works. And um, some people tell me I could never walk six miles a day. And I say, well, I didn't think I could walk four miles a day and I'm going to get to six when the weather in Maine is not five degrees, which it was this morning. <laughs> well, is there any uh, question I didn't ask you guys that you really wish I would have? I don't think so. I mean, you're you're going to do your piece to put this together so that people can see what we looked like before and have all that for comp comparison's sake. Um, I show our before and after pictures in a lot of ways and a lot of places, and it really isn't just look at the weight change. It's really because I enjoy people recognizing that we are a whole different couple, that we have a whole different body language. We couldn't even sit in the same space like this, you know, when we had 200 plus more pounds um, on our bodies. And so um, we have freedom that comes from, yes, being physically free of so much excess body fat, but also um, freedom that comes from a lot of mental and emotional baggage that's been able to be left behind. And that's really what I want for people. 
that is awesome. Um, so if there is, uh, if, if people would like to get in touch with you or, or connect with you in any way, like what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, so we have a website, which is www.fastingfeastingfreedom.com. Um, and that website has our before and after picture gallery and the blog. We both write for the blog and it has links to our social, other social media. So um, we love for people just to check out our story and, and see what we're up to. And and your the title of your book and where can they get that? So the book is Unbelievable Freedom: How We Transformed Our Health and Happiness with Intermittent Fasting by Ryan and Kim Smith. It's on Amazon. You can get it for Kindle. We actually have our audio book in the works. We could have asked you about how we do that, but we figured it out on our own. <laughs> and uh, the other ebook retailers, all that stuff is linked to the website too. Okay. Well, thank you guys both so much for being here and for telling your story. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing story and, and thank you for sharing it. Thank you so thank much, you. Kayla.